Well, got a rather interesting one for the channel today. This is a 19 inch uh, K4900, previously rebuilt, fully reflowed, uh, full cap kit, new filter cap, and the whole nine yards. See if I can zoom in there. New filter cap, I mean everything. It's been fully gone through and working, and it's been in our joust machine at the arcade for years. And all of a sudden one day, it started having a, uh, a wonky image where it just starts pulsating, like it'll go whoop, 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 whoop. The image was pulsating. And the sides aren't square. If you watch the side here, it just kind of, it'll creep up. It's like it's, cre the, this little black blob here on the right is, it's doing a wave. It's like, it'll, it's, it's, it's doing a wave like this. On, it's both sides actually. I don't even know if you can tell on this side. See how it's slowly like doing a wave back and forth. Over here is the same thing. Yeah, it's slowly, it's slowly going like this on both sides. Now this is with the TPG. If I hook up an actual board here, this may be more difficult than I suspected. Let's turn it off and plug in an actual board here. I should have had this ready, but okay. Now if we disconnect the TPG and turn it off, let's grab an actual, get this pesky pesky sucker in here, pesky Tuscadero sucker in here. And of course there's other wires and junk in the way as always. Nothing is ever easy off by one then off by another one. There we go. Okay so now check out what it's doing with an actual PCB hooked up. Here we go. Any day now. There we go. So with an actual PCB, yeah, it's uh, doing the shakes here, the hula as we call it. But you know, you can see it's wah 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 wah. So it wasn't this bad with Joust, but with uh, MK3 here, you can see it's just going haywire. Do 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 do. <laughs> so what's causing this? Well. I can't say offhand because, like I say, it's been reflowed and recapped, new filter cap, all that jazz. Um, I double checked all the solder joints and everything. Everything's fine. It's not a solder joint problem or a filter cap or something like that. Uh, I am confident that we have a bad B plus resistor. And the reason I say that is because the B plus should be 130 volts and we're at 146. I think we have 160 on the unregulated side, which is about normal and only 146 on the, on the output, on the regulated side. Now the B-plus resistor is R305, I believe it is. It's that big ceramic resistor right there. And on the side closest to the tube is the unregulated side. And the side away from the tube there that I have my black lead on is the regulated side. We should have 130 volts there, and we don't. We have 146. And this thing is just going crazy here. So I think we have a bad B plus resistor. So let's get this thing off the tube and do some checking and find out and poke around and see if that hypothesis is correct. Okay, so we're off the tube obviously and I've got the light bulb here because I'm gonna do the light bulb test to test the power supply, but I went ahead and tested the B plus resistor, expecting it to be somewhat out of tolerance. Uh, but if we read it, it's reading a complete short. Zero ohms. We should be 150 ohms. We're reading 0 0.3, 0 0.2. So it's not possible for a resistor to short. So there's something else on the circuit that's shorted. What is it? Well, it's not this resistor because it's reading 3.3, .3, which is really what it should be, 3.4. Yeah, but our main B plus resistor is pretty much dead short. Now, how could that possibly be? If the voltage regulator was shorted, it would blow the fuse, but it's not. So if we go to diode mode, let me put our negative lead in a screw head and touch each leg. We should get a 0.5, I believe, to two of them, and then a 0.15. So let's see here. There's our 0.5. Then there's a, this lead here, 0.5. This one here. That's our uh, frame. 
So yeah, now I'm now I'm not so sure. But that's our there's our short. But is it the voltage regulator that's bad? Let's find out. It's very simple to remove. How could the voltage regulator be shorted and not have the fuse blow? That I've never experienced that. But it's looking very likely that that's the problem. That would explain why we're having this pr issue, uh, having this odd B plus. It's either going to be the voltage regulator or the B plus resistor. But how could you have a shorted voltage regulator and not blow the fuse? I guess it depends on how it shorts. But let's find out here. So if we remove the transistor and we simply go to the frame and we touch the legs, none of these should read to the frame as far as I know. Well, it, yep, zero, there it is, 0 0.2. And with that removed, let's test our B plus resistor. Do we get our 150 ohms now? <laughs> there you go. What in tarnation? That is odd to the nth degree. I have a bunch of 4,900 parts here. Of course I do, why wouldn't I? I've never seen a B-plus resistor go bad on one of these, so... Uh, so I got some voltage regulators here. Um, brand new one right here, so let's just see what this one reads. So on this one, it was this leg that goes dead short to... Gr oh, 9K, hold on. Zero, there, this one, okay. Now if we go to this one, yeah, see there are two, almost three mega ohm. So we've got a bad voltage regulator. Now how in the world is that possible and not damage the fuse? That leg that's shorted goes to, that was this one, which goes right across that was this leg that runs right across our B plus resistor. And then our filter cap. Yeah, this exploded in glorious fashion one day, shorted out to the ground, the AC jumper. So I had to put a little uh, jumper bridge across there. This is like six years ago. This was running in our joust machine ever since we opened the arcade for about uh, it's almost six years ago. So this was just a quick fix to get the chassis back up and running. But um, wow, okay, well, Interesting. That would explain it, but it doesn't explain why the fuse didn't go out. How could this operate with a shorted voltage regulator? Well, uh, let's go ahead and just replace it. It's quick and easy. Just like so. We'll get the screws back in. Obviously, there's some type of scenario where you can have a shorted voltage regulator and have it not take out the fuse. It depends, obviously, on which part of the regulator is shorted. Most of the regulators have, you know, just two pins. Well, I won't say most of them, but, you know, some are like the HOT where it's just two pins and not three. So it depends on the part number and all that jazz. Now, with that replaced, there's nothing to solder in. It's just a, re a line replaceable unit, as it's called, LRU. Uh, we can go back to our resistor. Does it read 150? Well, there you go. <laughs> Imagine that. So, faulty voltage regulator. Live and learn. Now, with that out, let's do our light bulb test and verify that we're getting 130 volts to uh, the, rest, the rest of the system there. So, again, now, if you're unsure, for the most part, take this with a grain of salt. If you're unsure how to do a light bulb test, the easiest thing to do is just remove the HOT from the circuit. Some, sometimes you can just uh, desolder it and leave it on the chassis installed. Other times you have to remove it. 
like for, for this instance on the 4900, it's just a socketed transistor. We take the transistor out. Now there's no HOT in the circuit. The horizontal section should not power up. And if we take a couple of leads here and we clip onto the regulated side of the resistor, which is again the side away from the tube, and we go to frame ground, and then we take our meter and we go to frame ground and we go to volts DC. I'm going to have to use a lead here for this one. Clip on here as well. So we should get 130 volts, give or take, and our light bulb should light up. Uh, let's plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. Well, is it going to work? Let's see. Yep, and we get 124, but I'll live with that because it's uh, this should be the analog, perfect analog for the CRT, but eh, it may not be with the 4900. So there we go. That's, that's a far cry from 165 volts. So uh, let's get this back on the tube and see if it now operates normally. Got the HOTs reinstalled, our meter's hooked up to read our B+. Again, it goes right, uh, right there on the resistor. Can we even see it? Uh, anyway, that's where it goes, right there. The one, the lead on the resistor furthest away from the tube. So, as we saw, as I reiterate, just so you know. Okay, so now we're all hooked up, ready to go. Let's turn this on. We got our UMK3 board here we can use for testing. And we're hoping to see a stable image and 130 volts for DC, DC, for B+. <laughs> 130 volts DC for B+. So here we go, one, two, three. Okay, it comes on, 125, and it's, it's supposed to be 130 if I recall, but let's see if we have a stable image here. Anytime old tired tube, come on. And... What do you know? Nice and stable. No more wobbling. No more fidgety. No more wavy. There we go. Imagine that. Quick and easy. So, uh, I'm mystified. I could have swore it's supposed to be 130, but I'm, I'm not going to complain at 125. It's a far cry from 150, which we had, but uh, well, that's it. Fixed. Uh, bad voltage regulator. Voltage regulator shorted, it doesn't take out the fuse. Odd. But, nevertheless, there you go. I'm not going to worry about size adjustments, nothing, because obviously it might just go right back in joust. I don't know if I rejuvenated, I haven't decided. But uh, yeah, it works. That was it. Shorted voltage regulator. So, uh, there you go. Quick and easy today. Appreciate it. Hopefully, you learned something. Like, share, and subscribe, as I always say, and we'll see you next time.